Hi, I'm doing my presentation on every skill law. Um, and let's get started. So this is a quote from his director of studies at um, basically the equivalent of a high school in America. Um, and he said, it is the passion for mathematics which dominates him. I think it would be best for him if his parents would allow him to study nothing but this. He's wasting his time here and does nothing but torment his teachers and overwhelm himself with punishments. Okay, so early life, um, he was born in 1811 outside of Paris, France, and his father was a mayor in their little village and his mother was a teacher, so she taught him until he was about 12. Then he went to uh, the College Royal de Louis le Grand, uh, in 1823. Well, first of all, his parents, both of them were very well educated, um, especially in the realms of like literature and philosophy, which is different from what he was interested in, obviously. Um, but then he got to school and the structure just kind of made him lose his passion for those other subjects. And uh, he was just kind of like uninspired by his teachers didn't really see a point to it, but he did love math. Um, and yeah, he received a lot of discipline, discipline referrals. He was always interested in mathematics, I think, but um, when he read the works of other French mathematicians, um, it really inspired him because I think he he kind of like liked questioning himself and trying to figure out like what he could do. Um, and then under the guidance of one of his teachers, he really studied algebra and that was what he focused on mostly. His big question was finding the solution to um, an algebraic equation, specifically um, explicit formulas with rational operations and extraction of roots for solutions up to four, but they could not solve equations using five or more. So basically there was, there were already solutions for numbers one through four, but when it got to five, no one could figure out um, how to like solve those equations with rational operations. Um, and so Galois was fascinated by that. And that's kind of like what he decided to work on. So Goa sought to answer the question that I was just talking about. Um, and so he attempted to find formulas for polynomials with a quintic function, uh, which he proved was actually impossible. So he produced a framework which allows us to prove that we cannot find a formula that tells us what the zeros of a polynomial are. Um, and he did that by doing t to the fifth minus six t plus three and then the two solutions to the equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero are um, these two. So how do you answer this question? Um, first of all, he realized that formulas for solutions uh, use square roots, square roots of square roots, um, cube roots of square roots, and so on. So he realized that the numbers that can be reached from the towering step by step, um, which the towerings you can see right here. Um, so the towerings are square roots, cube roots, etc. And so they have to have a specific form of symmetry. Um, and there's an example of a quintic polynomial whose, whose solutions are lacking that kind of symmetry that the formulas give. So therefore, it has to be impossible to represent solutions in terms of those formulas because of the, of the symmetry not being there. In a less complicated way, um, solution formulas are built on top of integers in a way that generates a set of numbers with specific symmetry. And since there's an example of a polynomial in x to the fifth that does not contain that symmetry, it's concluded that it's not solvable by a formula. This is a timeline of the tragedy in Galois' life because it was kind of full of it. So basically he, as a teenager, 
um, he tried to gain admission to like the top school in France for math, um, and he failed twice. And the first time, actually both times, it was largely because he wasn't good at explaining his work and also his writing, which we'll see later, was just kind of like all over the place. Um, and it, just hard to understand, especially coming from a, someone else's mind. Um, and then in 1829, he wrote his first memoir for the French Academy of Sciences on the solvability of, al of algebraic equations. Um, and that was lost by the Academy. And then the same year, his father committed suicide. Um, and that was largely because of political pressures. In 1830, he became a student teacher and he also became a huge political activist. He rewrote the lost memoir, but it was lost again by the Academy. He wrote a pro-Republican article that got him kicked out of school where he was student teaching. And he also got arrested twice for his Republican activities. I think one time he was acquitted and then the other time he spent a little bit of time in jail. And in 1831, he presented the third memoir that he had written to the Academy and it wasn't lost this time, but he did receive a negative review. Um, the judge or judges said that um, his work was, again, incomprehensible. And they also believed that it contained a significant error, but it didn't. So the circumstances of his death. So Galois um, died in Paris when he was 20 years old, um, which is kind of crazy to think that he did all this advanced math when he was a teenager. But um, his death was caused by a duel. But there's a lot of running theories about this duel, and it's kind of a mystery, but um, some people say that it was set up by police to silence him because of his political activism. Um, some people say that there was not a duel. He just did it to further the Republican cause. Um, others say that it was staged and thought to look like a police ambush, again, for uh, the political cause. And then there's another theory saying that it was over the honor of a woman. Okay, so how was his work published following his death? Um, because it obviously was not published during his lifetime. So the night before his death, Galois wrote a scientific testament address to his friend, um, and he summarized his work with theorems and conjectures um, about the solvability of algebraic equations. Uh, his manuscripts were eventually published in 1846, but it wasn't really until 1870 that um, Galois theory and group theory became fully established in mathematics. So um, this is the actual note that he wrote, and in the margins it says there's something to complete in this demonstration, I do not have the time. So he's obviously very rushed and he theorized that he was going to die. And I think it's interesting that he spent his last living night, um, consciously so, like writing down his work. Um, that just shows like how passionate he was about math again. Okay, so before we talk about his mathematical contributions, um, this is one of the one of his like writings about math, and you can see how kind of like all over the place it is. I don't think I could understand that. That just kind of also symbolizes his personality because um, he was just kind of like always like all over the place in a rush um, and it wasn't different when it came to math. Galois's theory determines when an algebraic equation can be solved by radicals. So um, he proved that the solvability by radicals is possible if the group is solvable. So the group can be broken down into prime order. Um, and at the time when he was creating this theory, he 
there was no such thing as like a group in math um, or solvability really. So um, he was kind of ahead of his time and he didn't, uh, he didn't name these theories or define them um, at all, but he did obviously like use them. And he was the father of group theory or is the father of group theory because Galois theory is kind of like interconnected, obviously. So his discoveries were the foundation for what group theory is now. And that's my work cited. So that's it.